What's going on, Eagles Nation? Welcome to the latest episode of the Birds Banter Podcast, presented to you by PHLSportsNation.com. This is your host, Matt Loopy, and today I have a very, very special guest with me, Eagles running back, Boston Scott. Boston, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. Great, man. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, definitely. A uh, pleasure for having you. First off, what have you been doing throughout this pandemic to stay in shape? Yeah, man, I've been really fortunate to be able to uh, stay at the facility that I've been training at during the off season in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, obviously, with the social distancing and uh, the pandemic going on, you know, uh, our workout groups haven't been more than five people, but I've been able to stay consistent with my workout. So uh, I've been able to stay in shape. I've been able to kind of stay in a routine for the most part. So it's, it's been pretty good in that area. Awesome. Glad to hear that. I'm sure you're excited to get back on the field, huh? Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. I can't wait to get back to work, you know, seeing uh, what Howie's done in the uh, free agency and uh, in the draft, man. I'm excited to get the guys back together, man, and just start the process, man. It's, it's going to be fun. Good. Well, Boston, just last summer you were fighting for a final roster spot, and now you're set to lead the backfield along with Miles Sanders. How does it feel knowing that just one year later you're a big part of this offense? You know, I think it was it was definitely a blessing to be able to get out there and show them what I could do. But I also know the nature of the league. You know what I'm saying? Their job is to find the best the best position, uh, to find the best players out there. So I know, you know, while I was able to have some success, I know that going into this next year, you know, you, you always got to earn your role. You know, and Deuce yeah. definitely emphasizes that, man. It don't matter where you got drafted. Where you're at, what you did last year, this is a new year. You have to show up every single day at work and earn your role. So I'm looking forward to competing with, you know, the guys in the, in the room. We have some great names in that room, some guys that, that work hard. Their MO has always been uh, hard work. So I'm excited about the competition, but I know that it's not – nothing's given. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's going to be my approach. It definitely help, you know, being a walk-on coming up in uh, college, but – you know, everything has to be earned. So that's mm. that's my mindset, and that ain't going to change. I like it. Staying hungry. So we saw a lot of greatness last year. Should we expect more big things with you and Miles this year? Yeah, no doubt, man. For, for both of us, man, after every game, you know, I, I kind of came on towards the end of the season when they started giving me more touches. But at every single game, man, me, me and Miles would talk, you know, and i tell them, bro, like, man, you're special. You know, mm. it's only up from here. You haven't reached that standard yet, and that's just a standard that we have for ourselves as competitors. So, you know, in my opinion, I haven't reached the standard that I have set for myself yet. So there's much more to learn. Uh, I can continue to work on my craft, and um, I'm I'm excited for for both of us. And Corey, too, man, and uh, Elijah, and Mm -hmm. the guys that are in the room, man. All the guys have potential, you know, and so we're going to strive for greatness. Awesome. Yeah, you got a great group going so far. Um, when the Eagles signed you, you were immediately compared to Darren Sproles due to your size and your playing style. Is Darren someone that you've always looked up to? Yeah, man. I, I was a Saints fan growing up. Uh, so, you know, whenever he came into town in like 2011, um, you know, he, he had a big impact on, on my career because at the time, you know, I was in high school and I didn't have any offers uh, and whatnot. So, you know, I was feeling pretty down, but being able to see him come in. Uh, I think that year they went to the divisional round against the uh, 49ers, and I watched him throughout that game. And, man, just seeing seeing him uh, do what he's been able to do for the last 15 years mm-hmm. you know, definitely inspires guys that look like me. And I, fr- I really believe that he kind of set the standard and he showed coaches uh, year in and year out that guys that look like us can be productive. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know, you see guys like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He just got drafted in the first round. I would love to see, you know, if he might, he might be the first guy uh, under five eight to get drafted in the first round. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but you know, I, I definitely think that Sproles has had a huge impact on the game. Uh, not just uh, what he's been able to do uh, productively, but also just inspiring guys that are undersized, overlooked. You know, so he's definitely had a big part in uh, where I am today. Awesome. So now that Darren is still with the team in a front office mm-hmm. role, what kind of impact does he have on you, a player today? Yeah, man, I think it's going to, it's going to, you know, I think it definitely helps, you know, whenever, you know, you know, guys that have been through it. So whenever, like, for instance, Deuce, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this isn't a knock. Coaches that haven't had any experience, but I think 
you know, dudes going through it for 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, he's seen a lot of the things that we've seen, you know, and I can say the same thing for uh, Sproles, you know, he's seen a lot of the things that we've seen. So, you know, whenever he gives that advice and whenever he coaches us up, you know, I know it's all from a place of experience. It's all from a place of being educated and just knowing how that stuff goes. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, him being able to take that next step in his career, you know, because it's something that we've talked about personally that he wants to do from a, from an administrative standpoint. Uh, but, you know, I'm excited for him, man. I'm excited for him. I'm excited to continue to work with him. Uh, having the opportunity to work with him as a teammate was, was great. And now, you know, I'm looking forward to, to this as well. So it's going to be cool. Yeah, that's great. You guys can continue to grow that, grow that bond. So looking yeah. at last season, um, you caught the league's attention, specifically those last four games. What was your mm -hmm. favorite memory throughout the entire season? Man, I got to say, like, just the the tenacity of the team, man. Mm -hmm. Usually you, you, you see guys on the practice squad that, you know, you'll, you'll have one guy that'll get a chance and get promoted to active roster and, you know, he'll make a play here and there. We had multiple guys, you know, multiple guys that, that were able to get promoted and actually, you know, have big-time plays in, in clutch situations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was win or go home. So to have as many guys as – we did come up and, and be able to contribute. It was, it was really, you know, it was really special to see, you know, G Ward and uh, Deontay Burnett and Rob Davis and uh, Josh Perkins. And, you know, I'm sure there's a bunch, uh, there's a few guys on defense as well, but, you know, um, just being able to see those guys, you know, get that opportunity, you know, cause a lot of guys on the practice squad, people say, Oh, you know, oh, we beat y'all with practice squads. These guys are just guys that, need opportunity yeah, you know what i'm sure. saying guys that are under the radar this we're still in the nfl too you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying this is the best for the best it doesn't matter who we're playing we're still playing against elite level talent yep you know what i'm saying so it's just about opportunity that's really all it is so before this interview we ask our fans some questions and um, there's mm -hmm. an abundance of these two. First off you're dancing um in your three <laughs> touchdown game against the giants you found the end zone <laughs> And had an amazing dance. It honestly didn't even look real. And I can't tell you how many times I've watched that video. Where do you get your dancing skills from? Man, it's something that I kind of messed around with in high school and middle school. You know, like before in yeah, sixth grade or whatever, I didn't make the team. So ever since I was a young kid, man, my, my parents always made it a point to, you know, make sure that I'm always learning as much as I can. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, whatever you're in, you know, you give it all you got. But, you know, don't limit yourself to just one thing. So I'm always looking to learn as much as I can. So I play instruments. You know, I mess around with dancing or whatever. But my parents always made it a point to, like, you know, just learn as much as you can because you never know how it might help you uh, down the road. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's just kind of something that I've just kind of messed around with. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure you'll find the end zone plenty. So uh, we hope that you have some more dance moves ready for us. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the lab. I'm in the lab just working. Good. <laughs> um, so the next question was a play in that same game. I think you know I'm going to talk about that long, dramatic yeah, spin move. What was that all about? <laughs> yeah, man, so uh, break it down for you a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah, so usually whenever you're running full speed, man, and you make that move, uh, I was running full speed, and whenever you make that juke move, I didn't feel like that it was, you know, at enough of an angle to really – throw the safety off. So I was expecting the safety to drive on me. So the reason why uh, the spin looked like it did, because I had the ball in my right arm, mm -hmm. which was wrong, which was wrong but uh, I was going to spin to to my right and use my left hand to stiff arm the safety because I was expecting it, like I said, to drive on me. But yeah. it ended up not driving on me. But I already had it in my mind that I was going to spin. So it ended up looking a little silly. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I was ready. Yeah, yeah, good, good. It was it was great seeing uh, Deuce's reaction on the sideline after that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Deuce's character, man. He's a character. Yeah. Um, throughout all of your success last season, our team at PHL Sports Nation created a shirt to represent you. It has the Boston Market logo, but instead okay. of Boston Market, it says Boston Scott. Have you ever seen this shirt? No, I have. Uh. -uh. All right, we might have to nah. change that. Uh, get one over to you. Oh yeah, I gotta see that. Yeah, yeah for dope. sure. Um, how does it feel that people are now designing shirts with your name and you're even recognized by Boston Scott? I mean, they sent us a message on Twitter about it. That's got to be awesome. Yeah, man, it's, it's cool, man. All the support and all the love is, it's, re it's really been cool, man. It's been, it's been kind of overwhelming. You know, mm -hmm. like I've had to turn off my notifications on social media. <laughs> so, 
you know, I apologize if I miss, you know, miss stuff, but uh, yeah, man, all the support and all the outflow is, uh, it's, it's been cool, man. It's really, I really, I really do appreciate how the, how the city is kind of, uh, you know, embrace me. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Philly loves having you and mm-hmm. we're hopefully just a few months away from the upcoming season. The official schedule is out. When it came out, was there a specific game that you circled or are extra excited for? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's one on there. There's one on there. Oh yeah. yeah I mean, every, every game, every game is exciting, man. You know, every game I'm gonna approach the same. Uh, but you know, uh, every every game is important, man. But there mm-hmm. are a few on there that, I, that I'm definitely gonna uh, definitely gonna have fun with. All right, good to hear. Um, it was great to see you and so many of your teammates contribute towards Carson's A01 Foundation fundraiser last week in lieu of his mm-hmm. annual softball game. What's it like mm-hmm. playing with Carson Wentz, and what kind of impact does he have on the locker room? Yeah, man, he's a, he's a great leader, man. Obviously, um, he, he's, like I said, he's a leader, man. He's dedicated, hardworking. You know, he's before practices, he's the first one in the weight room getting mm-hmm. ready, making sure that his body's right. Uh, a guy that is a true pro, you know, the way that he uh, really focuses on details, you know what I'm saying, and uh, Josh coming in and being able to, you know, help him throughout the season has really helped him. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, man, just the way that, you know, guys rally around him, um, he's a true leader, man. And obviously what he's he's able to do on the field, man, is is, is truly special. You know what I'm saying? He gets the ball where it needs to go. um, And also, you know, what I feel like really makes – quarterbacks a lead man is their ability to make something happen whenever stuff breaks down yeah. and i feel like you know as far as a lead you know <laughs> there aren't many quarterbacks that can make stuff happen like 11 mm-hmm. games so, mm-hmm. you know um we rally around the man he's our leader and uh that ain't gonna change man we got all the confidence in the world in him and we know that he's gonna he's gonna lead us man he's the captain of the ship and you know hey he's gonna lead us to the super bowl i truly believe that awesome great to hear so to end off, I want to ask you several quick questions, more about you off the field and as a person, just to get a better feel of who Boston Scott is. So first off, who's your favorite football player of all time? Barry Sanders. All right, good pick. Um, favorite Barry music Sanders. artist right now? Oh, I, I got a few, man. Chance the Rapper has always been mm-hmm. a guy that I, I've listened to a lot of his music. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate what he does off the field and what he does in the community of uh, in, in the Chicago, in the city of Chicago. Man, he, he does a lot. Uh, yeah. So I've always had I've always had an appreciation for him and what he does. So uh, yeah, I, I would have to say he's probably one of my favorites. All right, and this question, I'm sure all the Philly fans are going to want to know the answer for this one. Favorite cheesesteak spot in Philly? Uh, there's a there's a lot. <laughs> there is a uh, lot. <laughs> Be honest, they're all they're all really good. <laughs> they're all really good. I can't all right. really pinpoint just one, but they're they all. Good. Yeah, we'll take that. Um, yeah. If you were not an NFL player, what would you be doing? Uh, I would be doing. I would probably be, be trying to pursue a physical therapy degree. Okay. Because uh, um, you know, I, that's that's kind of the approach that I was taking. You know, because I didn't really even through the draft process, you know, man, we were talking about uh, me and my strength and conditioning coach were talking about, you know, get, making the most of my opportunity. My dream was to play in the NFL. You know, like I said, I was doing everything that I could to get there. Um, but if, you know, push came to shove, you know, it's, it's a small percentage of guys that actually get to pursue their dream. Yeah. So if that wasn't the case, then that would have been, that w- I would have been pursuing that. Okay. Um, we talked about your dancing a little bit ago. Would you say that you're the best dancer on the team? No doubt. All right, I like it. Confident. <laughs> um, no doubt. Good. So your teammate Jason Kelsey re- recently announced his retirement from arm wrestling, of course, and yeah. you are a former state powerlifting champion back in high school. If you could get Jason out of retirement, could you take him on in a uh, arm wrestling contest? Man, look, I've never seen somebody move that as athletic. The, the entire line, bro. Yeah. I, I've never seen – a group of guys that big that can move that well mm-hmm. so i he got it, he got it. I, <laughs> I ain't gonna mess with it all right all right and lastly throughout your journey to the nfl what is the best advice that you've ever received that made you who you are today um no matter what happens to you man don't don't ever let anybody or any circumstance steal your joy and now that came from uh these worlds all right i like it don't ever let it it steal your joy man stay grounded in your foundation whatever that may be whether it's faith 
or, you know, family, whatever it may be. Mine is my faith in uh, Jesus Christ. But, you know, never never let your circumstances or what happens to you, you know, uh, dictate your mood. You know, you stay, you stay consistent. Great words. All right, everybody. Again, this is the Birds Banter Podcast presented to you by PHLSportsNation.com and can be streamed on all major podcast platforms. Boston, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. All right, man, stay safe, stay healthy, and we can't wait to see you on the field this season. Go Birds! Yes, sir, appreciate it.